What's going on guys, Tony Vego here, and welcome to my E3 Microsoft Press Conference review. Wrote out my new script because I couldn't find the other one, so let's try and get this done. Well, let's, where do I begin? Xbox, they, they, they really did it. They went back to their, what they did. They went back to games. They did, dedicated the entire thing to games. 90 minutes of games. Loved it. I couldn't believe they actually did it. I can't believe I actually did something Microsoft did. My god, that was... That's just amazing how I love something Microsoft did. They also gave something that I didn't think they'd do either. They get, they let people know that they're the reason the Xbox One is what it is. Because it's true. Without the fans of Microsoft, Xbox One would not be the console is today. It would be paid to be online all the time. You had to be online or your account would be cancelled and you couldn't play it. You could not play it without logging in first. That is what I did not like, but the fans helped change it. And they, Microsoft really gave the fans the props they deserved, and they promised everything that I don't know they'll keep up to, but I hope they do, because I'm really starting to become a Microsoft fan. Not as much as I am Sony or Nintendo, but I am becoming quite a bit of a Microsoft fan. Enjoying some of the products, the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, really enjoying them. Hope they can be great. Hope the Xbox One can carry on be great, and I hope uh, Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo carry on with their console stuff and all that. Yeah, let's get further into it. It's a small one that I actually kind of like because parts of it really add to the atmosphere of some of the games. So when they zoomed out of it a bit, so they show the screen and all the fans. They have these bands that were lit up. And it really added to the atmosphere of the entire thing. It was really eerie. Some because they were showing this horror game. I think it, I think it was a horror game, but it, it was it was and they had those bands on. It was really eerie. The atmosphere was so great. Microsoft, that was um, that was amazing. I really loved how they did that. They pulled everything in. Yeah, and Phil Spencer. He, I I like him. He's a good speaker. I think he. Should be leading Microsoft. He's leading Microsoft into the, the Xbox into the next thing. Xbox review there, great one. I love those bands. The kind I like those bands because of the eerie atmosphere they added. All right, let's get on to the first game they brought up. The first game they brought up. As soon as they brought up this game, I was like, "Oh crap! This is gonna be crap, isn't it?" Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare. Get the. You get to play the DLC and the add-ons first on the Xbox One. I wrote that. That don't interest me. But they were showing like the gameplay or mission of it, and it doesn't look that bad. It was actually really good. It had that emotional atmosphere. You have to leave. The, basically, spoilers here. Uh, you have to leave this guy behind. His arm. Basically, you were blowing up this thing, and this guy's arm got shot, trapped in between the door and the plane, and you had to leave. He pushed you off. It was taken off. And it blew up, and his arm lands right beside you. It that is so emotional. Did not think a Call of Duty game could have that. I never played Call of Duty. I didn't know what they was doing. But if I did, I, I probably would have brought a tear to my eye if I knew those characters. I might, I might not. I might you might not know them. It might be new. I don't know. <laughs> don't know what mission that was. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not really. I don't really know Call of Duty. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the second game they brought up. You know, it's two pages, this guy. So, yeah. <laughs> Forza 5, that's the first thing they brought up. Only for Xbox. Giving free con free good content to their stuff. The best racing map they have is free content out right now on Xbox Live. Go get that. You have Forza 5. Really looks interesting. Really looks good. If I if I, if I was into racing games more, I would probably go get it and get Forza and I enjoy it, but I'm just not into them that much. Yeah, so Forza 5. That new map, great game content. The game they were showing for Forza, though, the Forza 5 that was really for the map content, Forza, the Forza the game they were showing, though, is Forza Horizon 2. Built for the Xbox One in 1080p. Forza is Xbox's version of Gran Turismo, basically. And on it, you can create a club, and it's coming out September the 30th. September the 30th. It, uh, it's an open world, and you can pre-order it now if you want to. So go do that, guys, if you want to. If you really into racing game, go order pre-order it. It looked really good, really well done, great graphics. Looks like a great game to play. 
yeah, and Microsoft did real. Microsoft Microsoft really did a great job on securing Forza for Xbox and not letting Sony try and get their hands on Forza when it first came out. I don't know what there is. The next game they brought up is Evolve. It was a good game. I really enjoyed it. It's made by the creators of Left 4 Dead. Great little thing there. Great little atmosphere. It's got RPG style but with a shoot with a first person shooter. You basically have to pick your class between like an assault, a trapper, a medic, and I can't remember what the fourth one was because it was like near the start of the thing. I can't really remember what it was and but I really didn't I it wasn't the best one. I, I but I really did kind of like it. Or you can be the monster. You can be the monster you have to fight. Which I think is really well done. Left 4 Dead was a great game, and it's good to see the creators build, bring another game out. I don't know what it's done with Xbox, if it's just up for Xbox, I don't know that, guys. You have to look at it for yourself. But I hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoy that game. The next game they brought up is a lot of big ones. Hey, if you're the fan of this series, man, you'll enjoy this one. Assassin's Creed Unity. They brought that up. The first game directly for this gen of consoles, PS4 and Xbox One. First game for that. It's set during the French Revolution, so the 18th century, 1789 really. And uh, you can form your own brotherhood, play with up to three friends on Xbox Live. It's got cool gameplay and time setting. It's a good story, but it's got a good potential story. And yeah, it's just got really good stuff. The, it's got really good. It's actually makes you feel like you're actually around that French Revolution. It makes you feel you're you're in it. It makes you feel like you're you're in it. It's that you're actually there. The atmosphere, everything is real. Like, let's just say, basically, when you have one of the missions, you have to kill this noble and look, there's people. Are, there's the peasants are rioting outside because you know the French Revolution. It was awful. The uh, King Louis treated the peasants awful. They were poor, hungry, and all that. They were riding outside the noble's house, and no, and you kill two guards. Bang! No, the peasants just break through the last floor. Oh my god. To a distracted floor. It was cool, I liked it, it was cool, creative, and I think they could do there was a lot with it. I really liked it. Here's my favorite part of the entire thing. This is gonna be quite biased. This is really gonna be biased, guys. Because it's Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> Cool <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> this is gonna be so biased. It's a cool setting. I I really think it's a cool setting. In it's gonna be spread across Orlais and Ferelden. If you play Dragon Age Origins, Ferelden and Orlais is basically France of the world. Uh, cool. And Ferelden's really Britain, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, and all Ireland and all that. It's and I think. Basically, the trailer had a really good narration to it, and it was a pretty weird thing to pick you out about the thing, but it had a really great narration, like, stuff like, the world is being torn apart by the people within, so it's that stuff like that. It sets the scene very, very well, and it's quite emotional, because if you've played Dragon Age Origins, I know it's not really a spoiler, because people, you might not, you should have seen the trailer, Dragon Age Origins had a character called Leliana in it, so she's... Or Legion slash Ferelden. Uh, more or Legion, though. Basically, and she's being tortured at the end, and it says, You will break. And she and she says, the last word you hear is her say is, I will die first. Really great emotional there, considering she was with you in the first game. You have the Exile Prince DLC in Dragon Age 2 you saw in the second game, which I do. And I really thought it was quite emotional. I really will hopefully just get to watch some great stuff, more stuff, and... I really enjoyed it. October 2nd. It will come out on the Octo October 2nd for the Xbox One. So eight days before I get, I get to play it on the PlayStation 3. Hope you guys will enjoy that. I will not be joining you till uh, October 10th playing that game. So if you want to talk to me about it, just uh, put a comment below. And, all that, and I, will, I will talk to you about it. Hope you guys will enjoy that. Next game coming directly to Xbox One. Sunset Overdrive, really enjoyed that man, funny commentary, good style, makes me want to buy an Xbox One, it's an open world, cool gameplay, cool graphics, 8 friends on 
dedicated servers only on Xbox One. Greatness. That 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 has the talent to be amazing. Really enjoyed that game. Really enjoyed watching the trailer, man. Really cool. Really cool settings. Really cool inventive stuff. Really inventive weaponry as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoy that. For but next couple is going to be skimmed through because I couldn't be about to take loads of notes on these. And I'm going to leave some a couple of these to the end. I'm going to skip some of them to the end. But here we go. This is where we go through. After that was Dead Rising. Three arcade remix, yeah, out now on, out now only on Xbox Live. Go get that, guys. If you want to go get that? Cool. I didn't really like it though. There's Dance Central. There's Fable Legends only on Xbox. Good graphics, nice gameplay. There's Project Spark on Xbox and PC. Create your, you get to create your own world and game really. There's Ori and the in the Blind Forest only on Xbox One. There is. Inside, which is a cool little game, first on Xbox. Uh, ID Xbox to help de help developers who are independent develop to make games. Develop there's a developing kit with it. There's Rise of the Tomb Raider. There's and then there is. Uh, let's see where are we? Uh, the uh, well, I forget where I'm lost. Where there's Phantom Dust only on Xbox One. It's a remake. There's the Division new content on Xbox first on Xbox One. And yeah, so yeah, let's come on to the other games we got, which involves The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Great graphics, great gameplay, open world. Hope you guys will enjoy that. Great cutscenes. I, I really enjoyed it. Hope you guys will too. It was very dramatic, very, very cool, very rpg -ish. Love The Witcher series. Not as much as Dragon Age. So any of you who say Witcher is better than Dragon Age, as well. No, I'm joking. That's, that's your opinion, man. That's your opinion. Don't let me change your opinion on that. But, yeah, which is really good series. And I hope it's a good game. I hope it comes the way it was. Uh, yeah, and the last game they mentioned, because I'm not going to mention the last game I'm going to mention is a big one. Well, big two, sorry. The last game they really they mentioned themselves is Crackdown. Yes, they are bringing Crackdown back. Crackdown, Microsoft's Xbox is building that themselves. They got a great team building it. A friend of Phil Spencer's and a and a and the original maker of it making the game. Whole oh, Crackdown has the Crackdown has really the ability to make a break. It could be either a good game or a bad game. I don't think it'll be in between. I don't know. Really, I don't know. And here we go. The last ones. I didn't get enough notes because I skipped through this part. I skipped through this part, but I got a few. I got three notes really. Let's, uh, the first one I uh, I got was Halo Master Chief Collection. Basically, you go back on one console, one game, I think, and you play back through entire Master Chief's entire story. Great. It's a build-up to uh, only on Xbox, but it's only on the Xbox One guy. That's the downfall to that. Yeah, it's not 360. But that's leading up to a uh, taste for Halo 5 Guardians. Massive game coming out. If that's Halo basically launched is get Xbox the way it is. Many many of you are like, oh Call of Duty did this, Call of Duty did that. Yeah, Call of Duty and Fans Warfare is a good game. But Call of Duty did not get Xbox where it is. Halo did. Halo released with the first Xbox. Halo really was Halo launched with the first Xbox, Halo launched with Xbox Live. Halo was the corner step for um Xbox 360, and now Halo 5 is going to bloody hopefully save Xbox One, so this, so Xbox One could not get absolutely their asses handed to them in this generation, like they already are. But yeah, Halo 5, great game. I I really enjoy Halo. I'm probably gonna get it Xbox One soon after the I get a PS4 of course and a Wii U because I'm much more Nintendo and uh, Sony fans. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really liked how Microsoft went back to games. Really thought it was great. Overall, I'd have to give Microsoft for their review. I'm probably gonna give them a B, a B for this one, guys. Uh, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Great stuff. Great games. And yeah, really great. So I hope you enjoyed this Microsoft review, well Xbox uh, review of E3, and I hope you tune into Sony and Nintendo and my overall. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.